Hey hey people, Seth here. Let me tell you about a game I've played on and off for years, Path of Exile. Path of Exile is a free-to-play Diablo clone action RPG and much more of a spiritual successor to Diablo 2 than free could ever be. It's made by Grinding Gear Games, a Chinese Skinner Box company operating in New Zealand, a lesser-known colony of mainland China. It is, in the spirit of Diablo clones, a huge grind fest for items and money, but there's layers of complexity to keep you interested. For a start, all your skills come from gems, which come in two forms, active and support. Support. Active gems do stuff. Support gems modify the stuff they do. These need to be socketed into items to do stuff, and linked if you want the support gems to actually affect the active gems. This leads to some creative and retarded combos. Cast on death is a perfectly valid way to play, and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. There's multiple characters to play with their own backstory to how they ended up on the path of exile. Trademark copyright. Basically, everyone who does bad shit in Oriath gets sent to Rayclast, where they'll probably die in exile. The Templar questioned his faith. The witch had her house burnt, so she fried some boomer's kids, and the marauder didn't meet diversity quotas. Most of the classes have good reasons for being shipped off to Rayclass. My favorite has to be the duelist, because his entire reason for being here is literally some nobleman talked shit to me. So, I fucking killed him. What a guy. You can see where the inspiration came from for all the different settings. Rayclast is loosely based on New Zealand. The forests are filled with koalas who want to tear your skin off, and the beaches are filled with meth heads who want to stab you for your wallet. Your skills mix with your gear, and these in turn are influenced by your passive skill tree, which is fucking massive. Just look at this shit. Every class starts in a different spot on the tree, but all the passives are the same. Classes get to choose unique passives later on. This might sound very complex at first, and then you'll realize that nothing fucking matters except more life and damage. I recommend the first time you play to just do your own thing and experiment. Then, once you hit a brick wall and can't progress any further, look up one of the most meta builds for the current patch and brainlessly steamroll through the content. It's a learning experience, and there's a lot to do. Finishing the main arc of a story is just the start of Endgame, where you will autistically tweak out your characters with more and more ridiculous setups until you burn out and stop playing until the next league. The classic life cycle of most Diablo clones. Or, in the case of one of my friends, finish Act 3 and tell me that the game's too short, because he missed the exit leading to the other seven acts. When asked about his build, he said, What do you mean linking gems? I've just been using Heavy Strike. Path of Exile has a bit of a learning curve, and it's not for brainless. But as long as you come from a civilization that's discovered fire and has some frontal lobe development, you'll be okay. Each league puts a new spin on the game mode, giving you new ways to grind, and you can choose to either play a softcore or hardcore. Hardcore players are, of course, the vegans of Path of Exile. And we all know there's no such thing as a quiet vegan. If you interact with a Path of Exile player, they'll either tell you that they also play and enjoy the game, or they'll start screaming incoherently that they only play hardcore, solo cell found, and that they desynced for one millisecond yesterday and lost their character for the third time this week. As a free-to-play game, Path of Exile servers sometimes aren't the best, and you can rubber band or desync. This isn't a problem for a regular human being. Hardcore players will, however, pathologically blame everyone but themselves for dying and demand a server rollback each time it happens. This pathological behavior extends into their private life, as many of them have, unfortunately, lost custody of a kids. Siphoning alimony payments into microtransactions ensures that their spouses receive minimal support. Their children may have mandatory visitation days, but they universally hate it. One child I talked to, Timothy, was brutally beaten with a bamboo stick after he picked evasion over a health node on the passive tree. And you know what? He got off easy. But the game is completely free. The only money you spend on it is on microtransactions, which don't directly influence gameplay. Even if you're not interested in cosmetics, you will, sooner or later, need practical shit like extra stash tabs and specialized tabs for holding currency items. Speaking of currency, that is the primary objective of this game, obtaining currency. Unlike fiat banking systems in modern countries, the primitive people of Rayclast trade items for rocks of different colors. You can smash these rocks and 
than your equipment, denting and changing them in the process. An exalted orb is one of the most valuable rocks, and many players haven't even found one. Chaos orbs are far more common rocks, but appropriately rare enough that they're the gold standard for trading. The main point of Path of Exile isn't the creative builds, the metagame, or the challenge of getting to max level. It's trading. I sit here all day, plugged into Poe Trade, and I flip shit for hours and hours. I don't even leave my fucking hideout, which is beautiful by the way. I'm so glad I picked Haku as my master. What other master lets you place dead fish and rotting bodies on the shoreline? What other master allows you to block the entrance with shipwrecks and pointy sticks? None of them, except Haku. I'm hooked into every API. I've got that shit on live alerts. I've got Poe Trade on my phone so I can lowball people for prices on alt accounts. I try match users with known sex offender registries so I can blackmail them into selling their lore weave for cheap. I make prints of all my trades and fax them to children in Malaysia just to inspire them. I buy shit cheap and I sell it higher. Why? For what purpose? To see the numbers rise. At its heart, this is the real meaning of Path of Exile. It's a cutthroat world out there, more brutal than any corporate position, but less paid and with longer hours. Do you really think you've got what it takes? Being good isn't good enough. Not when you're competing with hundreds of Russian spam bots on auto refresh. Sometimes you'll even take a holiday to the beach, but you won't be able to relax. You'll spend all your time there sending out hundreds of trade requests a minute. There is no sleep, there is no rest, just a 24 seven Beijing grind. You often do things so fast you forget Yet, who you even messaged. Did Delvin to my anus want 2C or 3C for that ring? Or was that little pump suck from a minute ago? And you don't want to embarrass yourself by asking. Just act cool. Put a chisel on the table so he knows you mean business. Don't worry, he'll be back. They always come back. Trading is a wild place, and you can also hang out on the global chat while you wait, which is a great and intelligent place to be. Currently, they're discussing if it's gay to suck your homie's dick, ironically. But there's one rival in my quest for capitalist domination, China. The Chinese conspiracy on Path of Exile is plain for all to see. They've grown so bold, they don't even bother hiding it. Chinese gold farmers running hundreds of bots threaten the stability of our economy. Global chat is often and spammed with Chinamen with Chinese names like Abksk or Asdafkdafk asking you to go to dogfart.com to buy exalt orbs and chaos orbs for the low low price of two dollars or one cent a piece respectively. Grinding Gear Games claims they do everything possible to stop gold farmers, but I can see through their lies like rice grains. GGG is a subsidiary of Tencent which also owns Riot Games and Tencent is owned by the Dalai Lama. Follow the paper trail, follow the money, and you'll find that GGG and the gold farmers are one and the same. Players will first buy currency from the Chinese orb cartel. The money is wired instantly by Western Union to the Dalai Lama, who pulls the kill switch and bans the player after several days. During those days of decadence and luxury, the player will get a taste for power, which is then cut off. Much like an addict, he craves for more exalted orbs, starts a new account, and tries to turn a new leaf, but we all know how it ends. But despite the strength of our enemies, we will trade on. That's what Path of Exile means to me. Or maybe it's my heritage speaking. I mean, we were expelled from over 200 MMOs after all. In all seriousness, Path of Exile is pretty amazing for a free-to-play product. If you like Diablo or any of its derivatives, you'll feel right at home with what I feel is a raw improvement over those old systems. However, keep in mind that Path of Exile started development centuries ago, and it's not very well optimized for your hard drive. So, if you can afford it, get an SSD and put Path of Exile on it instead. It should run like butter. The PvP arena is also really fun. Stun locking people never gets old. And remember to praise the All Holy Toucan daily on Global Chat. A temporary chat ban is a small price to pay to see all men of the world united in worship. Very good game. It gets a high score. The score is arbitrary. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild who have been generously funding and bankrolling these videos. This one is free though. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one.